Thank today. You, Thank you for coming in. You just heard uh, Governor Christie said that Hillary Clinton is running as Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Well, look, Governor Christie should be focusing on running his campaign. I think what uh, Senator Clinton, Secretary Clinton said yesterday is laying out her vision, her values, and her agenda for America. These are things she's been fighting for her whole life. She's been fighting for children, families. And yesterday she said we need to create an economy where everyday Americans and their family get ahead, where we build an economy that's built by all and prosperity is shared by all, and that people get real rewards for the work they put in. Uh, that's the kind of vision she laid out. Those are the values she's been fighting for her whole life. Uh, I think uh, Governor Christie probably knows that, and he's very good on the stump, and he's very uh, uh, direct when he makes his points. A lot of policies from, from Sec Secretary Clinton yesterday, but notably in its absence, no mention of that big vote on Capitol Hill this week for Trade Promotion Authority, big defeat for President Obama at the hands of Democrats. Bernie Sanders, other Democrats saying it's time for Secretary Clinton to take a stand. Well, look. Secretary Clinton's been very clear that what matters is what's in the final deal, and there is no final trade pact yet. There's a vote now on There's authority. a lot of congressional jockeying going on right now over things like TAA and TPP, acronyms that no voter understands. Democrats. No, it's a pretty simple issue Democrats. whether or not the president should have the authority to negotiate it. Is she for that no, or No, the, sim the simple issue, George, what Secretary Clinton has said is the simple issue is in the final deal, will we have the labor protections we need to protect American jobs and protect our wages? Will it protect our national security? Will it address issues like currency manipulation, uh, environmental protection, and labor rights overseas? That's what's going to matter. That's what the simple issue is. And that deal doesn't exist yet. So a lot of jockeying about bills that Democrats used to support 100% and now for some procedural reason in Congress, they're voting against it. I think they'll have to explain that to each other as they're haggling here over what the final but, package but, is going to be. But does she believe the president should have the authority, the fast track authority, to negotiate now? I think she believes what the deal has at the end of the day is what will matter to the American people and to working people. All of the rest of this is Washington inside baseball about how we get there. She wants to see the final deal. She wants to make sure it protects American workers, and that's what she's fighting for. You know, last time around, you were one of the chief architects <laughs> of President Obama's campaign against Hillary. And back in October 2007, you co-wrote a memo that was published by Ryan Lizza in The New Yorker that said the key distinction between Clinton and Obama would be on character not policy. And part of the memo said this, Clinton can't be trusted or believed when it comes to change. She's driven by political calculation, not conviction, regularly backing away and shifting positions. Now, that argument worked for you all then. Why won't it work for Secretary Clinton's opponents right now? Look, I think Secretary Clinton is the most right person for this moment. What American people need and want right now is a tenacious fighter who will help them get ahead and stay ahead. They were rocked by a crisis that came a year after that memo, by the way, George. That crisis the American people have fought back from. They've worked two jobs. They've worked two shifts. They're figuring out how to make it work. And what they want now is a president who will fight like heck for them in the office every day to get ahead. But as you saw she it. brings that to the table. She does not quit. She's never quit, and she's been fighting on their behalf, uh, you know, for her entire life. But uh, as you saw in Cecilia's piece, our latest poll shows that 52 percent of Americans think she is not honest, not trustworthy. That's as high as it was back in the campaign. With all due respect, George, your latest poll also shows when you ask who cares about people like you and who will fight for people like you, she's above water on that by three points. Jeb Bush is 20 points underwater. I think that's the fight people want here. Who can I count on? Who can I trust every day in the Oval Office to make my case? to care about my life, make sure that my kids have choices in the future that I want them to have, and that when I can work hard and get ahead, I can stay ahead. That's what Hillary Clinton bring, brings to the table, and that's why voters count on her and trust her to do this. There's also been a significant amount of commentary this week about the potential electoral strategy uh, of the Clinton campaign, saying that Hillary Clinton's going to follow not the Bill Clinton path, the broad electoral map, but the narrow map of President uh, Obama. And I was David Brooks, uh, probably not going to vote. For Hillary Clinton, but he says that the error here is if Clinton decides to be just another unimaginative base mobilizing politician, she will make our broken politics even worse. What about that idea that running a narrow uh, electoral path will make it much harder to govern if you win? Look, first of all, I think the premise of that story was kind of entertaining. The notion that you should be running on the same map of somebody who ran 20 years ago is absurd today as it was when Bill Clinton ran and he didn't campaign in Texas. No Democrat had won Texas since 1964. The country changes, demographics change, and where the battlegrounds are fought are where actually middle of the road mainstream Americans are. And that's plenty of states, and you know this because you've covered these races. So you run a national campaign. We have organizers in all 50 states right now. 
You have to do that. You have to get people mobilized no matter what state you're in. She did a house party yesterday in 435 congressional districts. You have a map of states that are known as battleground states. That's not going to change. That's where the toughest fights are going to be. But you campaign everywhere in this country. People, the 24-hour, seven-day-a-week media ensures that all over America, people are hearing your message, and you've got to get that message out everywhere. And we will be on top of it. Joel Benenson, thanks very much. Thank you.